Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the demonstration video of the Netsch DEA 288 Epsilon. My name is Dr. Andreas Spörer. I'm working for Netsch Analyzing and Testing in Germany and I'm responsible for the business segment Polymers. Today, I would like to show you how to perform a simple measurement using the DEA 288 Epsilon slimline. This is the instrument shown here with two channels. Additionally, we need a, an adapter box to connect a sensor to the measurement device. Here we have sensors, which will be explained later. And we need a computer, a standard Windows computer, to record the measurement. To perform a measurement with a dielectric analyzer, you will need to connect a sensor to the instrument. Therefore, we have an adapter box which is capable to connect sensors as well as thermocouples. Having a look onto the sensor, the sensor is uh, seen here. It is a so-called IDEX sensor with a line spacing of 115 micrometer. This means that the lines between the anode and the cathode have a, line, a distance of 115 micrometers. In total, the sensor has a length of 35 millimeters. For a special application, there are extension cables available, but in this case, we have not used any. The, in this case here, the uh, sensor has been connected to the adapter box via this flat connector. Also, the thermocouple has been connected to the adapter box, and the adapter box is connected to the instrument, and uh, the instrument will record the signals. On the one hand, the dielectric signal, on the other hand, the thermocouple signal during the measurement. Before starting the measurement, we have to set the right measurement parameters in the software. The software is called Protoys 7. This is the most recent version of the Netsch analyzing and measurement software. Uh, we are going, we want to uh, analyze today the curing of an epoxy resin. This is a very fast curing epoxy resin, which has a setting time of three to five minutes. And these epoxy resins will be shipped with any uh, DEA instrument. We have a ha like 10 packages of this just to test if the instrument works correctly. Therefore, we have to define a measurement set. I'm going to do this right now here in directly in the Protoys software. I go to File, create a new file. A new window opens, which is called Measurement. We go to the General section. There we can choose general parameters like laboratory, computer, project, operator's name, and a short description. Here I've written measurement of two component epoxy kit. We're using the DEA 288 Epsilon, which sends on IDEX 115, you in the thermocouple type K. In the next window, we come to hardware options. Um, the DEA 288 is capable to support different kinds of additional hardware, which is not connected today, like a laboratory furnace, a laboratory press, a UV curing lamp, or auxiliary ports. As we won't use any of those, we won't choose them. We choose channel number one to record data from channel number one. Um, the DEA is capable to connect up to 16 different channels. There are different kinds of housings available, but today one channel is sufficient. And as we have connected the sensor to the channel, we now have to select the correct sensor. We go to select here. Select, we use a disposable IDEX sensor with a line spacing of 115 microns and a length of 35 centimeter. We go to OK. These are the standard testing uh, parameters. This means every sensor that has been connected to the adapter box should be tested prior to the measurement. We go here to start. A short measurement is performed. You see the progress here. Now we get a green bar. This green bar says the measurement, the test of the sensor has been successful. Successful means that the face angle of an empty sensor should be somewhere between 80 and 90 degrees. That the voltage that is applied should be slightly below 10 volts. Here in this case, 9.98 volts. And the current should be very, very low. We have point 
0.185 micro ampere, which is very, very low. This means we have no shortcut in the sensor. Additionally, we get a temperature signal. We have 20.8 degrees Celsius right now here in the room. Successful test. We could select, if necessary, different kinds of thermocouples from type P, E, J, K, S, B, W and others. In this case we stay with type K. What is necessary if you choose another sensor, you have to switch at the adapter box to the right channel, so there are different numbers from 1 to 9. We come to the next, we should add sample name. We add simply epoxy in this case, as we use simply epoxy resin. Here this can be more detailed by the customer afterwards, but to keep it simple, we just name it epoxy. We have to choose the program. In this case, we just have to say how long the measurement should take. We choose simply one hour to perform the measurement. Uh, mentioned before, the setting time is quite fast, so we will record the whole curing of the material for sure. And we can abort if we say uh, the measurement is finished, we can abort much earlier. We can select frequencies um, from 1 millihertz to 1 megahertz. In this case, I have selected frequencies from 1, 10, 100, 1000 and 10,000 hertz. Uh, frequencies below 1 hertz should not be done for fast curing systems as the measurement time is quite fast and above 10,000 hertz also the information uh, that we get is not very, very often not necessary. So 1 to 10,000 hertz frequencies. In the next folder we have the frequency program. If we had different segments, um, we could choose that we do not want to have every frequency in every segment, but as it is a very simple measurement with only one uh, segment, we select all frequencies the whole time and we get a cycle time. This means after 2.6 seconds, all these, ten frequency, uh, all these five frequencies will be recorded and will start again with the first frequency. The last window, uh, there we are asked to save the measurement and we got, are going to say uh, DEA, demo, epoxy. That's all. We can click OK. And now we have to apply the resin onto the sensor. In the next step, I would like to show you how easy it is to perform a measurement with a DA288 Epsilon. The material selected for this demonstration is a two-component epoxy resin, which is inside of this small bag here. These bags are shipped with any instruments from Netsch so that the customers has several samples readily available to perform a measurement during installation to see if the system uh, is working correctly. What I will do now is I will open the bag, mix the two components inside of this cup and apply the resin onto the sensor. Now I will open the package of the two component epoxy resin. I will put it into the cup and mix it. The two components are mixed homogeneously inside of this paper cup. You can also use an aluminium cup or th something else, but it is important that uh, as the system is curing inside of the cup that you use a disposable cup. So mixing for 10 to 15 um, seconds should be sufficient to achieve a homogeneous mixture. Then I use this wooden spatula to apply the resin onto the sensor. In this case, it is important that you cover the whole sensor with the resin. Or you coat it with the whole sensor with the resin. So the whole, all the electrodes should be coated. And you should take care that the thickness is homogeneous on the resin. 
What we see in parallel on the software is a drop in the ion viscosity. Now the sensor is coated completely. And we get a nice signal in the dielectric analysis software. We see it first when the sensor is covered with the resin, a drop in ion viscosity as the capacity of the system, of course, is changing. When we have a look on the measurement after six or seven minutes, we see besides the increase of temperature also an increase of ion viscosity. The ion viscosity increasing, increases as the cross-linking density of the material increases and this correlates to the change in the dielectric properties like the increase in loss factor and the decrease in ion conductivity. Now I will change the scaling in the computer in the, in the x-axis we will have a detailed look in, in the change it within the last five minutes and there we see this nice increase a, of ion viscosity more pronounced as the scaling now fits and we see that the different frequencies also show uh, different ion viscosity. This is mainly due to the reason that different voltages applied to the resin stimulate different parts of the resin and this means that one hertz frequency uh, gives a response of a different part of the resin than a 10 kilohertz measurement. But to have a more detailed look onto this, I will um, deselect the higher frequencies. This can be done easily just by selecting the frequency buttons on the top of the computer monitor. Now we only have the one hertz measurement of the ion viscosity and the temperature measurement of the sample. And now we see after roughly 10 minutes measurement time an increase of ion viscosity already of one decade from 10 to the power 8 ohm centimeters to 10 to the power 9 ohm centimeters. This means the system is already curing and we have a progress here. Um, now in the next steps we will see how steep uh, the system will increase and if we get a horizontal plateau um, which will give an indication that the measurement is coming to an end or a curing is coming to an end under these conditions.